Assalamu alaikum everyone. I was just looking outside my window at the green at the green trees and the beautiful view and was wondering how great the creator would be who created such a magnificent uh, creation. Uh, then it, it felt so funny how when we sit in our gatherings and amongst friends in our peers and uh, when we're having discussions or we're talking about anything it seems so easy to talk about the dunya to talk about worldly stuff say my friend says there's a sale in jc penny or there's uh, there's a sale in the mall or um right there, there's there's uh there's 50 percent off on the boots on the shoes and then we can go on and on discussing which brands we prefer which colors which types um, the shoes that we had in the past, you know, how long they lasted and our preferences, our choices and whatnot. And we can go on and on discussing brand, shoe brands or take anything, the furniture of our house, the curtains, our carpets, you know, um, we can discuss, uh, we can go on and on discuss, discussing the, uh, you know, the, 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 the standard of living and the uh, our subjects, what we're studying in class and our lectures and how they are and how, you know, their qualities and how they grade us and, you know, th these talks, they continue. But then when I think about the one who created us, the great being who created us and who created such beautiful creations, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, do we mention him in our, in our talks, in our discussions? In our, when we're sitting amongst our friends in our daily lives, how many times do we bring the name Allah on our lips? How many times do we remember our Creator? And how, how hard is it for us to remember? Think about it. It's so We can easily talk about the creation. We can easily talk about the dunya. When it comes to talking about the greatness of Allah, we hesitate. We're like, how can I talk about this among my friends? What will they think of me? You know, how can I start the talk? Um, you know, should I just say that SubhanAllah, Allah is very great. Allah created the skies, the earth. Will, won't I look so odd and out of place backwards? But it's so funny that SubhanAllah, Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala is the one who created us, the one who is sustaining us, the one who is causing our heart to beat 60 to 70 times a minute. Right, continuously beating, whether we're sleeping, eating, walking, jogging, whatever state we are in, our heart is continuously beating. And none of us can say that I'm the one that's controlling my heart. This is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He's so great. He's so magnificent. And we're in need of Him every single second of our life. There's not a single time that we can say we are, we are, you know, we are self-sufficient. We don't need Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And yet it is so hard to mention Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So today, I just want to take a few minutes just for reflection. And I want to tell us uh, and make it clear to us all that it is not hard to speak about Allah. We can start from anything. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran, وَفِي أَنفُسِكُمْ أَفَلَا تُبْصِرُونَ And in yourself are my signs. In yourself are my signs. Do you not see? Right? Look how, how beautiful Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has created each and every part of our body. Right? Our fingers, they're all not, they're, they are all not the same length. Right? Each finger has its own size, its own length, its own, um, you know, its own, uh, how it's different from, from the other and it has its own specifications and its own uh, usage. Right? And uh, similarly, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has created our arms, our biceps, triceps. How do, how does, how do we reflect our arm and how do we, uh, you know, all of our, our limbs, our ligaments. Right? Each and every part of our body is so detailed. Right? If you look at, um, I was studying science the other day, uh, the anatomy of the body. So if we look at our body, it has so many, the smallest building block of our body is a cell. And then from the cell, a group of cells, uh, you know, uh, that, that do the same job, uh, they form a tissue. Then a group of tissues form an organ. 
then that organ for instance the heart or the lungs or the kidneys then it's not able to function on its own so there's other helping uh, parts of that organ for instance the heart the blood vessels you know where the 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 aorta all of these blood vessels through which the blood pumps throughout our body the heart cannot work on its own so all of these things make up the organ system then there is an there is an there is a cardiovascular system there is an a respiratory system there's an endocrine system there's an excretory system in our body it's so complex a nervous system just in our body itself how many systems are put together in our body subhanallah and this is who we are so allah says look in yourself and you will find me right look at allah's creation so whenever we look at the creation of allah when we think about the creation of allah when we smell the the beauty of the creation of allah and when we taste the beauty of the, uh, the, the, the beautiful taste and, and, and different flavors of the creation of Allah, and when we think about the creation of Allah, we use our five senses to recognize Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Our sight, our hearing, our, the touch, our minds, and uh, the taste, right? Look at the mango, right? How it grows from the earth, and it grows from a small mango seed, right? And that seed uh, is put, neither does the seed have any fragrance, taste, right? It's a, bitter, it's a bit bitter, but then, you know, it doesn't have a significant smell, flavor, anything, a taste. And you put that into the mud, right? The mud, which is the uh, soil. And then that soil has no fragrance, no taste, right? It's brown color. And then, Allah, and then we water it. And through the, the great power and might of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, we can never say that the seed grows on its own. There's a huge power behind that seed becoming a seedling. That small, thin, weak seedling, uh, it sprouts from the ground and it bursts through the, the, that soil. Right? It's so delicate. If we touch it, it, will, it is to break. But it, it, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives it the power to, to break through that soil and come up. And then that seedling, is, it, it, it grows leaves and then it, it photosynthesizes that small plant and it makes food on its own using the sunlight and, and the energy from the sun. And then it grows into a small plant and then it grows bigger and bigger into a small, in, into a very uh, large tree with a thick trunk. And then the, the, the flowers of the, of the, uh, the, the plant, big, the tree begins to flower. And then uh, the, uh, the flowers turn into small, uh, small mangoes, right? And then these mangoes are green, they're, all, they, they're not ripe, they don't have, uh, they're very uh, sour if you eat them. And then uh, these mangoes, they grow into yellow, orange, red, uh, you know, different color mangoes. And then they have a, a beautiful fragrance, such a beautiful and a, a, a very yummy taste. And then they, and it's not only that there's one type of mango in the whole world. There's so many types and qualities and kinds of mangoes. And this is just one of the many fruits. And then there are vegetables and then there are seeds and then there are roots. For example, we have the potato, the onions, they all grow beneath the soil. The soil. And then we uproot them and we eat them as our, we put them in our foods and you know we eat it every day. So all of this, the greatness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the more we speak about the greatness of Allah, the more we see the greatness of Allah, right? The more we hear the, the birds chirping, the, the sound of the gushing waters, the ocean, the, the breeze, right? And, and everything, we see the signs of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And through the signs of Allah, we recognize Allah. Right? Let's not take this for granted. The things around us, let's take this, let's use the, uh, the environment where we're living, right? And all of this to recognize Allah, to understand Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, our creator, our sustainer. And then bring these things into our talks. Because when we speak of something, when we hear something, we look at something, then that is a thing that we begin to believe in, right? Nowadays, we're looking at the world. We're, we are, you know, we're continuously uh, in the worldly attractions, we're thinking about the world, speaking about the world, looking at the world, and because of that, the greatness and the love of the world has come into our hearts. But now we have to remove this love of the world because it's not eternal. This world is to end. Our life is, has an end. It's a very limited period that we have in this world. And after that, we are to move on to the hereafter. This life is like a travel. So we have to aim for the hereafter. We have to look at, we have to aim for the pleasure of Allah. 
aim for that everlasting Jannah, everlasting paradise. And for that, we need to connect ourselves with this. We, we, get, we are forgetful. So this is why we need to remind ourselves when we sit in gatherings among our friends, let us discuss the greatness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And when we discuss the greatness of Allah, this greatness of Allah, when we speak of it many times, look at it many times, it will come into our hearts. And then when Allah is great to us, we will have a desire and an urge and a longing to please Allah. Then to do the a'mal, to do the actions will become easy. Right? Then no one will have to tell us, go and pray, go and give charity, you have to give your zakah, you know, you have to go and, and perform pilgrimage. Because I love Allah and Allah is so great to me, then I will automatically want to please Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And this is what we want, inshaAllah. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah.